part four of renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine and this is about the base. A model base is the most important part of the model. If you have a beautiful model on a really scruffy base the eye automatically gravitates to the worst part of the model which would be the base. This base is actually okay it's just a little bit age worn. What I'm having to do with it is separate the mounting blocks for the engine from the main mahogany base. This is proving difficult as you can see here because the screws are really well rusted into the wood. I'm having to whack them with a hammer very carefully of course and then in a bit of a state. So what I'm going to do with these two pieces of wood is put them in a bath of cellulose thinners. I could use nitromores or a similar paint stripper but I do find that a bit aggressive and a bit nasty. This stuff is also known as lacquer thinners. One of the comments on the last video from a viewer said why didn't I use a steam cleaner? Not a good idea really because I think it may warp the wood or do some sort of permanent damage. I find that cellulose thinners is the best stuff to remove old paint. It's a bit smelly and it's a bit messy and you must always do it outside or at least in a very well ventilated area. As I mentioned in the last episode I've just about run out of cellulose thinners I'll have to get some more. This is the last bit and it's been used before. Time now to remove the mounting studs. I will replace these studs because they are a little bit chewed up especially once I put the pliers on them as you see here. The studs do need to be removed so I can use the belt sander to finish the operation and get a really good finish. Especially the top surface of the plinth which will be very visible when the engine's bolted back onto it. It's very important when using a belt sander in this manner not to round the edges. That would look really bad. You have to be very very careful and you can only go so far on the clean up job. By not rounding the edges, I don't mean the edges that are already rounded. What I refer to is the edge between the horizontal and vertical planes. When doing a job like this, removing paint from a part that's already made, it's a good idea not to use a new sanding belt. A new sanding belt will remove far too much of the material. Also the belt clogs up very easily with the old paint, so it's not going to do a new belt a lot of good. There comes a time when you have to do it by hand anyway. As you can see here, I cannot get the belt sander into that recess, so I'm using a piece of rolled up, I think it's 180 grit sandpaper, to remove the rest of the paint. If any of the paint is securely stuck to the piece of wood and looks okay, then don't go mad and try and remove it. If it's very well stuck, it will be okay. And once again, when doing it by hand, the sandpapering I mean, do not round the edges. That would be very bad. You can also use a small metal engineering type ruler to scrape off the old paint. Once again, be very careful not to round the edges. It's very easy to get carried away doing this job. Don't forget I'm doing a sympathetic rebuild, not a remachining of a new part. Turning my attention to the base now, I'm using the ruler dry to just remove some of the material to see what it's coated in and it looks like French polish. Sometimes mountain bases are not what they seem. They may look like mahogany, but when you start scraping at them, it turns out to be soft wood that's just painted. This example is a proper piece of hardwood, and the lacquer's coming off quite well. I'm now going to leave the main base for a while for the cellulose thinners to soak in. I'm giving the twin mountain plinths a coat of primer, so I can see what the condition of the wood is. And it's not bad, really. They're both going to need a bit of gentle filling and rubbing down, but they should come up quite well. While the primer on the twin plinths is drying, it's back into the workshop, and I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite dipped in cellulose thinners to remove all the coating. And as you can see, I'm also using the edge of the ruler to get right into the corners. I'd like to see all of the old French polish removed from this part, and I'll probably give it a light coating of a modern polyurethane varnish using a cloth. Well, I've nearly run out of the cellulose thinners, as you can see in the pot. But with the little bit that's left, I'll get the thick of the paint off at least one side of the metal parts. I can see that this engine's been steamed, because it was considerably more difficult to get the paint off from around the cylinder area, which must have been warm at some stage, and bake the paint on. My cellulose thinners has almost disappeared now, so it's time to go to my supplier and buy some more. This concludes part four. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.